Hi, my name is Paul. I'm doing this video in segments in order to make the video clearer for you so that you can understand better. So you may notice that I cut back and forth and sometimes I'm faster in some segments than I am in others. That's because I'm a little more excited. I'm going to take maybe two, three minutes to explain about my new 30 frame per second video camera. And but first, I'm going to mention a little bit about the camera you're looking on, my old 15 frame per second video camera. Then I'll explain my new camera, and then I'll tell you why I am not using my new video camera to take this video. This is another copy of the camera that you are seeing me from. This is a Philips uh, snapshot camera, and it also does web video. It'll do 15 frames per second. Um, it uses two AA batteries, at least I think they're AA and I think there's only two. It doesn't have much memory on it and it doesn't have any way to, ch to insert memory cards in it so you can only do about 20 snapshots. Okay, And um, basically it uses a double male USB cable, the kind that has the flat, the same type that you plug in the computer, it's the same on both ends in instead of the usual stubby end. And um, this one costs $12 but it'll do it'll do web video and plug it in because that's how you're seeing me right now is with the other co camera I have this is my new video camera it says it's a Cobra I don't know what brand that is anyway this does full 30 frames per second video it has a display on it when you open it it points towards the bottom you can turn the video up so that if you're taking pictures as you would with a normal camera you can see um, you can also, if you were going to be working on something where you had the camera below you, you can turn the video so that the camera is next to the video so that you can see from below. Or you can turn it around completely so that you can have this sitting on something and see what the camera is actually seeing. And it flips the video over so that the video is correctly, is correctly shown right side up when it's in this angle. Okay. The camera is a full 30 frame per second video camera. It is also a 5 megapixel snapshot camera. It is an MP3 player. It, um, what else does it do? It, um, makes dinner and cures cancer. Okay, not, not really. But anyway, it does so many things. I keep forgetting all the features on it. But the one additional feature, more than anything else, is the remote control. I can put that on a, on a tripod. I don't have to reach up to the camera like you would with most of the ones I see on YouTube, people having to do that. If I take the remote and bring it below viewing level, there's a button on it for record, which I can then press the record button, it'll start recording. Then I can press the record button, it'll stop recording. And that's whether it's connected to a com computer or not. This is a radio, um, you know, it's a remote control, it's a radio. It sends a signal to the camera. So I can put the camera on a tripod and work with it so that I can vi film myself without having, to re without having to get out of camera range to turn it on and off. Now the question is, if I've got this nice video camera that does 30 frames per second, why am I still doing this video on my old camera that does 15 frames per second? Glad you asked that question. Actually, you didn't ask that question. I did. And now I asked that question. I will answer it. I have a few problems with it. The new camera makes AVI files. My old camera, which can be used as a webcam, is connected to Windows Movie Maker, which makes MOV files, which are used with QuickTime. Even though AVI is a Microsoft file format, Microsoft Windows Movie Maker crashes whenever I try to read AVI files. Also, for some reason, the driver software that comes with it won't allow me to use it as a webcam, which is the way I use this camera. This, is, this camera does not have any storage capability in it. This little thing has a 2 gigabyte cartridge in it, and based on the amount of compression it will do, it will store over 1,800 photographs, or roughly about 100 minutes of video on the one cartridge. But I basically can't use it because none of the tools I have will edit AVI video or they won't work with the pieces I've got or it crashes on AVI video or they're too long or whatever. But the thing is I've got two choices. I can put together 
video, which is only 15 frames per second, which is what you're looking at right now. Or I can put together a video at 30 frames per second, but I can't edit it. Also, and this doesn't matter to me, okay, but it may matter to some people, since I can't edit it with Windows Movie Maker, I can't put captions on it. That means if somebody can't hear what I'm saying, they can't hear what I'm saying. They can't read what I'm saying. They can't know what I'm saying. And I'm trying to be nice here for, other, for the small number of people who might like to hear what I have to say but can't hear. That doesn't sound right, but you know what I mean. And none of the tools I can find, none of the open source tools seem to be able to work with AVI files. And most of them have extremely, to put it bluntly, crappy user interfaces. You get a decent commercial, as in proprietary, video editing program, and it's got exactly the tools you want. It's got a timeline. It's got the ability to cut video. It's got the ability to slice and chop, just as if the video was on film. This is exactly what you need to have in video, and none of the open source tools have it, and none of them will work with AVI files, which is what my other camera does. So basically, that's the reason why I haven't done any videos recently, because I wanted to do them with my nice new camera that I'm basically buying on credit. It's not that expensive, but I'm buying, in a, I'm buying it on time payments so that I can pay it off in two payments instead of paying it off all at once. Um, I found I had so much luck with this $12 camera that I decided to go out and buy a $212 camera. Only to find out the camera's perfect. Camera does great work. It'll even, uh, even it even comes with the connector that I can plug it into a, a VCR or a DVD recorder, which I have, and record video on it as if it was a regular studio camera. It's a great camera. I just can't use the the video it produces. It's like having it's like having a really great eight millimeter camera today that does video and sound but you can't use because there are no tools available to edit 8 millimeter film. This is ridiculous. It produces AVI files which is supposedly Microsoft's video format. Microsoft Windows Movie Maker can't edit those files. It edits MOV files which I believe are what QuickTime makes from Apple. Does this make any sense? Well, rant is over. If I can ever figure out why or someone can tell me, email me at the address on my shirt, which isn't there now. Ah, there it is. Somebody can give me some information. I mean, I'm well, I've got enough room on my computers. I've got three of them. I can put a Linux partition on there. I mean, if I can find the tools to be able to edit AVI files, fine, I'll go to Linux. You know, there's your answer. Okay, those of you who are interested in open source that you want a killer application to push people to go to Linux, Okay, there's your answer. Good video tools. You don't have them in Windows unless you want to pay a lot of money. There's your answer. There's one. There's an answer for you. You want to find a killer app to make people want to go with Linux? There's your answer. Good video tools. You don't have them in Windows, or if you have them, they are extremely expensive. For an ordinary person like me who doesn't have a whole lot of money and doesn't want to spend a whole lot of money, find a way to have good video tools so that people can edit video properly without going through a lot of headaches on the same scale as they would if they were using a commercial video tool. If you want to push open source, there's your answer. Bye.